We are called to this Komatsu PC200LC that is in need of some new lights. In the last video, you saw us diagnose some issues with the machine. In that inspection, we determined the excavator had damaged and missing lights. We're now on site and need to get these lights installed as soon as possible before night falls. Watch how we go from this to this. Welcome to Service Call, a mechanics guide to service, troubleshooting, and repair. And on this episode, what you'll notice is that one of them is much taller than the other one, and we're going to check to see how much voltage we have. <laughs> Just what we need, eh? So we're gonna be installing these LED lights on the boom, on the cab as well. One thing you have to make sure of is that you have the right voltage. Most of the ones you find on market are 12 volts. These are 24 volts. The other thing that uh, you'll notice is that one of them is much taller than the other one. We had to find these low profile lights because the machine actually comes with uh, the ROPS, the rollover protection system. I don't think this uh, tall one is going to fit, so we, we need these low profile ones to make sure they fit properly. To do this job, uh, we're going to have to make this adapter plate. Okay, we're going to have to modify it a little bit, twist it around, drill the holes a little bit bigger, give it a little twist. We're going to need uh, Allen keys, we're going to need our socket set, we're going to need our drill bits. We're going to have to test and see if we have power there. Our side cutters and crimpers. We're going to use some plastic ties. We're going to use our little torch for soldering or heating our heat shrinks. Okay, and then we're going to cover everything in a loom and she should be properly installed. We'll begin with the cab. We tested to make sure the original cables had power. Be cautious when working around electricity. So what we're going to do now, we put the lights on. Okay, we're going to use our multimeter and we're going to check to see how much voltage we have. We're gonna check for power at the plug-in just above the cab. These holes and, and connectors are actually made for the, for the lights. So let's see if we have any power here. And we have, let me see. So 25 volts, that's what we got at this connector here. Okay, so that connector's got power. We got 25, well, hold on a second. We got 25 volts as well, okay? So we got current coming to these connectors, all right? So we're good in that sense. That means we don't have to check fuses or check for uh, opens anywhere. Right in here is where the bracket is mounted. There's a bracket that mounts in here that holds both, uh, both lights. Uh, like I said, we don't have the factory, we don't have the factory uh, bracket, but we're going to modify the ones that we do have to fit, okay? Because it, it actually takes probably a week or more just to get the bracket. So we're gonna work on that and uh, make it fit. Now that we know there's still power, switch them back off. And it is suggested to disconnect the battery source from the machine. Because we're creating our own brackets, we'll need to get a rough idea of placement. So I'm just going to present the, the bracket on here just to have a look and see if our bracket's going to work. If not, we're going to have to go and find another one. But it looks, looks like it's going to work. If we can get that twisted over and then bent. We have to bend it and give it a twist. Okay, and then it's going to work. And it's going to end up right in this square right here. So the light will be... Excellent there. And then the same on this side. Okay, it's going to there. Switch this over like that. So it's going to end up right on this square. So the light will actually be able to shine right through this uh, screen that they put on here. Okay, this protection, and uh, and it's going to work perfectly right here, here and here. So it's going to fit good. 
our wires long enough so we can actually uh, connect it to, uh, to these and uh, it should be smooth installation <laughs> if everything works out well, okay? We now have a rough idea of how the lights will be placed and how we'll need to bend our own brackets to make it work. So we're gonna go from this to this. In the field, you'll learn that sometimes you have to be a little creative to solve problems and overcome hiccups. We'll begin by drilling some mounting holes in our bracket before we bend it. Just what we need, eh? You'll see here, the bracket is clamped to the side of this trailer. In a perfect world, you'll have access to a proper vise or drill press. But this is an example of the type of creativity you'll experience in the field. Whatever solution, ensure it is secure and you're being safe by wearing the proper PPE. So we got the holes drilled now. We saw that uh, all the bolts fit in there properly. We have the one that mounts to the cab and also the one that mounts to the light. So, so far so good. Now we're going to see if we can give it a twist. And we're going to use this, uh, this gentleman's trailer. Let's see if it works. And it should twist. <clears throat> so it should look something like this. So when we mount it on the cab, we have our light, okay? But because it's too far out, we're going to give it a little bend right here in the middle, okay? But at least the twist worked out nice. Oops. Just needs a little filing in there. There we go. So we're going to give it a little 90 degree bend right here between both bolt holes and that way it sits closer to the cab and it doesn't that way it doesn't vibrate so much right and it should set it very close to the center of the the bars the square bars that are on on the front uh, windscreen we got a good straight bend in and now let's go do a test fit okay so now we'll sit like that this one all right, so let's just snug these up a little bit. Let's see what it's going to look like. Let's mount these lights in place. We're gonna have to give them a little twist just to adjust it a little bit. Um, let's see. They were saying that it looks much better upside down, but I don't know. Let me see. Okay, just let me put them like that at first. Let's bend them. And let's see how it's gonna look. Might be better off upside down. It's gonna hit our bar right here. So let's put mount it upside down. We're going to have to twist it back a little bit. Okay, we're just going to let this kind of find its, its seat there. And then we're, we're going to twist this a little bit. Okay, 
we have a lot more bar to play with if we need to. Okay. So let me just snug that up a little bit. When coming up with a unique solution, like building your own brackets, be prepared to make changes on the fly. Here, we needed to make modifications to our bracket. Because of the bend, we discovered that the light would be better mounted upside down. This lets the light be adjusted freely without hitting the cage. Make sure you're test fitting along the way. Not making sure that what you're fabricating at different stages will work can cause wasted time and potentially unsalvageable mistakes in the future. Yeah, we're gonna have to twist it about halfway between the hole, this hole, and this mounting hole. So we're gonna give it maybe a 45 degree of right about here. Okay, so I'm gonna take them off and then we're going to create that bend. And then we'll retry it. That looks a little better, doesn't it? I think so. I'm just going to snug it up. We might have to give it another bend later on. There's a good chance I'm gonna have to retwist this one. Okay, but let's let's tighten this other one up. Snug it up. It doesn't look too bad. I'm gonna have to rebend the other one. Alright so let's get this on there. Had to retwist this bar because it was actually the wrong side twist to it. And this looks much better. We might have to just give it a little bend after they're installed, just to see where the lights are aiming. That's normal though. I've installed fog lights and things like that in the past and uh, they always need a little bit of readjustment, a little tweaking here and there. If you need to twist them a little bit, just take your crescent wrench, put them on there. Give it a little twist like that, just to make sure that they're straight. Yeah, they look okay. Okay, so physically they're installed. Uh, we'll just retighten them after. Now what we have to do is the wiring. Okay, we have to get the wiring done here. And uh, you see there's plenty of wire here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the same grommets that we used before, that were on there before. Okay, that way we don't get water in there. We're gonna put uh, some silicone, make a little hole right down the middle, just so this wire goes in. Okay, the rest we're just gonna, we're gonna cut and just let it sit inside the cab, behind this grommet. Yeah, and we'll just seal it with a little bit of lubricant. Okay, so we need to cut these and we're going to connect these with uh, straight butt connectors which are sealed so to prevent any uh, moisture getting in. So I'm gonna go and get the other tools, my cutters, and all the other equipment. Can't forget the grommets. All right so before we get too carried away the first thing we gotta do is let's get this on there because you don't want to have to uh, cut everything up again and because we forgot to put this in place. So what I'm going to do is just poke a hole through it, right down the center. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to put, um, let me just cut these off a little bit. I'm going to put sealant on it after, once, once we're done. But for now, let's just try and get it in there, just like that. Okay. We're going to cut this one a little bit and we're going to cut this end as well. Like that. Like that. Okay, and this one here we're just going to probably cut about here. Okay. Cut this 
a little bit. Two, we gotta do the same to these set, this set. I think our red ones are going to work. They're a little bit small. Oh, they did work. Yeah, they will work. Okay, we'll just put these in place. Use the red butt connectors. These uh, red butt connectors, these are actually, um, they have the goo inside, so when you heat them up, they actually seal themselves. And that's why we're using these ones. It's not just a normal red butt connector, but it's uh, it's the type with uh, sealant, internal sealant. Give them a little tug just to make sure they're on properly. Make sure they don't pull out. Okay. If you want to learn more about these styles of plugs, things like when to use them, what the colors mean, we'll include a link in the description below. tug they're okay twist them a little bit just to make sure that all the hairs get in between the butt connector just like that I'm just gonna test the light just to make sure that it does work okay uh, because it did we did uh, have power there so we're just gonna give it a quick test before we go too far And there we go, we have light. Okay, so I think you can see that. Light is working. Good, so far we're doing good. So I'm just gonna finish this one off just so you can see what it should be and then we're gonna go over to the other one and do that one. Torch. And we always start from the middle out, okay? Heat the inside part first. It's a, it's a bit of a cool day today, so it might take a little bit longer to get these to shrink, to get that sealant moving. Give it a little bit more higher setting. Yeah, it is taking longer for them. To... Okay, so you see that they usually shrink. Okay. And the goop starts working its way out. You gotta just move them around a bit. And okay, warm them up. Here, I'll show you. I'll show you the goop after. Let me do the other one first. Start from the center. Work your way out. Basically, what we're doing is getting the oxygen out. Okay. And as you start from the center and work your way out, the sealant is also working inside, okay? Making sure that the oxygen is all out, okay? All the oxygen has been removed, so then you don't get any corrosive corrosion or erosion happening inside the connector, okay? Remember, we're down here in the west coast. Winter gets very, very moist, very, uh, Lots of condensation, lots of humidity, so it's important. And you should be able to see nice and clear all the way to the wire. And I think that's what we have here. If you have that, then you've managed to, to get the sealant in, okay? You can see it, uh, you can see a little bit on the black there, right at the edge, okay? And you can see that the goop is right there, okay? Right there, right on the edge. Okay, so inside this, uh, there, it's, it's completely sealed now. So now, let's put this back inside. 
And basically we're gonna get that lip inside. Just gotta work it around, move it around. Just like that, until it seats. There you have it. Okay, so after, when we get the other one in place, we're just gonna put some goop on there, some silicone, all right? Just to make sure that it's sealed. And that's what it should look like, okay? You can pull it out a little bit. There shouldn't be much movement on there. Other than that, it's not bad. Okay, so let's go over to the other side. We did the exact same thing to the other side. To recap, first, slip the grommet through so we don't forget. We stripped the wires that supply the power to the lights, twisted the ends off, slipped on a butt connector for each wire, crimped the connector, checked to make sure it's snug, then connected the LED light wires, matching positive to positive and negative to negative. Finally, we sealed the heat shrink. You gotta keep it moving, that way you don't burn. Don't forget the grommet. The final step is to make sure you seal the hole in the grommet where the wires poke through. So, lift this up here. There you go. Now that the cab lights are installed and properly sealed for the weather, let's move on to the boom arm. Like before, we started by testing for power. 26 volts. Or 20. So we do have power here. We have power, so let's do a test fit of the light to come up with a plan on how we'll install it. And by doing so, we discovered a problem we'll have to solve. That what our problem is going to be, and a nut and washer go right through the hole. They go right through the hole. So, the first thing we're going to do because the hole's a little bit big, we're going to use these extra large washers on there. Mount them on there. Let's see what it looks like under at the bottom. I think. So if we had it underneath or on top, I, I have a feeling that right here would be even better, just underneath instead of on the top. What do you guys think? What does the audience think? Leave a comment below if you think it should. It looks better up top. See, the way I see it is it's protected. It's protected from anything that falls from the top, right? So thinking in that sense, I think it looks better at the bottom. Okay, so let me just snug this up a little bit. Okay, so we'll leave it there for now. We're going to have to cut these off. You know, I really hate cutting these terminals off, but this came from uh, one of the dealers, but um, you know, it, it's not exactly the, uh, the Komatsu product, which should just plug in there, right? So that's why we have to either convert this end to the Deutz type connector or we're just going to chop it off here and just reconnect it using those sealed butt, butt uh, connectors. And I think that's what we're going to end up doing here. But this one here we're not going to cut, we're just going to secure along the top. Okay, so let me get my tools. First thing we're going to do is remove this end. and. Oops, we're gonna have to go a little further because if you see the condition of the wire, it's actually, the insulation is actually breaking off, okay? So we're gonna go a little bit higher. Let's see how high we can go before we cut it off. Yeah, right here. Okay, 
Okay, so the reason I cut it up so high is because you can see right there, the wire is actually burnt. Okay, and it's, you can see the, uh, the copper strands just uh, right open to atmosphere. So we're gonna get rid of that. And then we'll cut that. And about there. These wires do look much thicker. Just like our cab lights, we'll be opting to use butt connectors and heat shrink. However, for this one, we'll be using a different color connector. So we may have to use the blue butt connectors. So as an alternative, and because this one is open to the elements, there's nothing above us, um, we're going to use these butt plugs and we're also going to use an alternative uh, heat shrink. This one's also sealed. And we need to go to the blue plugs because this one is actually a much, a much uh, larger wire. Okay. So we're going to that. Now I got like a million of them. Ah, there we go. Okay. So we just gotta twist the strands. Get on there. Just like that. Okay, and these ones. I'm gonna slide the, don't forget to slide your uh, heat shrink in there. Okay. Let's see if we can give this a little twist. We just bend them over like that, okay. Just it over like that. And we can put it in here. Let me just remove some of this insulation. Put this in there. Kind of squeeze. Okay, we'll just leave that there. Let's do a quick test of the lights. Make sure that they work. We have power. Now that we have the heat shrink in there, we're going to shrink it. Once again, you can see I'm starting from the inside out, from the center. Okay. You work your way out. Okay, so these heat shrinks, they also have the goop inside. Okay, so the, they have the sealant. And remember, we start from the inside out, from the center out, so we can get that goop sliding out. And sealing so that's what it looks like once it's finished okay and we've confirmed that the light does work so now what I'm going to do is tie it up this one here this Komatsu product already has a nice little area where you can tie your cables to very very handy 
Okay, it looks like that. Okay, and because there's no movement here, okay, I just allowed a little bit of, of line. We're hoping that the operator doesn't catch it on anything, but it, it's much easier to, to get at. Okay, I'm just gonna snug it up a little bit. I don't, I don't know exactly, it's still a little bit too much light. Maybe in, in about an hour or half an hour or so, we'll check again to see where these lights are aiming and we might have to just readjust them a little bit, okay? Because uh, I think that would probably be okay. I'll just snug it up there and, and also, you know, which angle. So I'm gonna you know, angle it a little bit. Okay. Most of the times the operator is going to determine where he wants his lights, uh, his spotlight. Okay, but I think it's going to be a much bigger improvement than what it was before, so looking good. And that is how you mount the lights on the PC200 LC-8. So to support the channel, like, comment and subscribe. And that's it for this episode. Make sure you join us for the next repair of this machine. Winter is here, the temperature is dropping fast, and we need to get the heater back up and running. Plus, the mirrors are missing, the mirror mounts are bent, and the windshield wiper needs replacing. So if you have any heavy duty questions, leave them in the comments below.